Hello and welcome to Living Creative with Pixie Princess. I hope that you and your family are enjoying a blessed and wonderful holiday season. I've been very nostalgic lately thinking about my childhood Christmases and I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. And in Atlanta, Georgia during my childhood and young adult uh, life, Christmas was very special. And if you grew up in the Atlanta area, you are ver probably very familiar with the department store, which was called Rich's Department Store. It started in 1867 by a gentleman named M. Rich, and it was just a dry goods store. And his brothers joined him over the course of 20 years, continued it as a dry goods store. And then they expanded with different merchandise and they had different departments. So in 1901, it became Rich's department store because they sold their merchandise in different departments. In 1924, they built what most of us would know as the flagship store in downtown Atlanta. It sat on the corner of Alabama and Hunter Street, and it was just a massive store. When they opened that store, they started the Magnolia Tea Room restaurant. It was a very popular, posh, restaurant. The ladies could go shopping downtown at Rich's department store, go have their lunch, and they would have fashion shows in the Magnolia Room, and it featured the time of the fashions and the trends of the time. So when the ladies were enjoying their lunch, they would watch these fashion shows and be inspired to go buy the newest hat or the latest dress or shoes, you know, after they ate lunch. So that operated year round. Now, Christmas had two wonderful Christmas traditions. And one of that, those traditions was the great tree. They had a five layer enclosed glass bridge called the Crystal Bridge that sat on Forsyth Avenue and it connected the home store to the rest of the department store. And at the top of this bridge, every year, starting in 1948, they would find the most perfect pine tree. And it had to be the minimum of 60 feet, but in most cases it was taller. So it was very massively tall and wide. You had to get ornaments that were probably as big as your head, you know, <laughs> to put on this tree. Now you could see it coming on a truck sometimes, and they would raise it up to the roof of that bridge. And on Thanksgiving night, they would have a ceremony, which included various church choirs and soloists. And everybody would gather downtown Atlanta. The streets were packed. And my family never went downtown during the actual ceremony. It was televised, and we watched it. Um, on TV and I'm sure it was more beautiful live but we always made a point to go downtown at night and see this tree and it was gorgeous and as an adult I worked at the rival store which was Davison's and Davison's was owned by Macy's and it eventually became Davison's Macy's and then it just became Macy's I didn't work there after that, I worked there when it was Davison's. Macy's also bought Rich's later on, and that's another story. And it was Rich's, Macy's, and then it was just Macy's. But, and then Rich's didn't exist anymore, and that's another story. But let's keep this cheerful for right now. And, you know, the tree was beautiful. When I worked at Davison's, I would get off work at night. And when I was going home, from work, I could see that beautiful tree. If you were driving down I-20 or anywhere in downtown area, you could see that beautiful tree and it just warmed your heart and put you in the Christmas spirit. Now the other Christmas tradition was popular with the kiddos. <laughs> and then it was the Pink Pig Monorail. Now it started in 1956. Um, and it was called the Snowball Express. Then they switched it to the Pink Pig. And it ran a couple of years. 
and then they decided to sell it. And oh boy, the outrage of that one. Due to popular demand, they bought it back. But when they did, they bought another monorail. So they had the twin pigs. One had eyelashes and she was Priscilla. And then the other one was Percival. So they had two pink pig monorails that you could ride. I remember in elementary school going on a field trip and our class rode the pink pig and they had a little Santa shop with um, little inexpensive gifts that the children could go buy presents for their family. And so we did that because you don't want to buy presents in front of your uh, parents. They know what you're buying them. So as a class, you know, you'd get a little amount of money and you could go shopping for your family. I remember buying my grandmother this little uh, butter dish that she covered in contact paper. And that's another story for another time. But if you took stock in contact paper during that time, you're probably very wealthy right now. But I will tell you that story later. Anyway, so that was just the highlight in their childhood. You're riding that pink pig at Christmas time. Parents could go shopping and entertain the children at the same time. Now another uh, tradition, Riches had a bakery and they made the most delicious cakes. And they had this coconut cream cake. You could buy it all year long. But at Christmas, it was just a very special cake to have. It was very decadent, it was sweet, it looked like snow. And I found the recipe for the richest bakehouse cre coconut cream cake. So stay tuned if you are interested in that. When we return, I will meet you in the kitchen and we will make this cake. And we also have a special surprise a little later in the video, so stay tuned. Okay, I found this recipe in an article in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution online, and I was so happy to find it, and I wanted to try to duplicate this cake because it was an Atlanta tradition. Uh, they made the cake all year round, but it was very popular at Christmas time. And so the article did have the recipe and I found the recipe somewhere else as well. And so we will have the recipe where it's more easily um, readable in the description below, but we will also post a link to that article in the Atlanta Journal Constitution. So, I would recommend you read the whole recipe before you get started because it does have three components to it. Uh, the cake, which we're going to be doing now, it's the Rich's Bake Shop Yellow Cake. And then there's the icing and then the filling, which goes between the layers. So right now we're focusing on the cake, but please read the whole recipe. Make sure you have all the ingredients and you understand the instructions. This is a little time consuming. This isn't a cake mix recipe that you can do quickly. So if you wanna make this recipe, let's get started. So the ingredients we are gonna need is flour. You can use cake flour or all-purpose flour, and I'm using all-purpose. You will need two and a quarter cups of flour. And then you will need a teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of baking powder. These are your leveling agents, so don't forget those. And then you will need a tablespoon of dried powdered milk. And you will need for that a half a cup of water, which I've already measured in a bowl. You will also need two third cups of liquid milk. I'm using whole milk. You can use low fat if you wish. And then you're gonna need three fourths cups of vegetable shortening and one and a quarter cups of granulated sugar, which I've already pre-measured and three large eggs. So let's begin. So you will need three 
nine inch cake pans. If you don't have three, you can use two and it'll be thicker layers, but I'm trying to stick to the tradition of the cake that Rich has made, which was three layers. So to prepare the pans, the recipe said to grease it with the short, with some shortening and you know put the flour in it. it. You may have seen your mother or grandmother or somebody do that. That was the old way. So the only thing that I'm doing different than the recipe is I'm going to use Baker's Joy. It's the same concept as the grease and flour. It's just a little bit easier. And I'm going to spray the bottom and the sides. I'm going to shake it up pretty well. You see that? One pan, second pan here, Make sure I get the sides. That's a whole lot easier than tapping that flower around. I didn't get that all over the kitchen. All right, so I've got the pans prepared. So our next step is to mix our flour with our salt and baking powder. Here's my quarter cup. I'm going to put it in a bowl. And the rest of my two cups here. Okay. And we needed a teaspoon of salt. There's my teaspoon. There we go, one teaspoon. And a tablespoon of baking powder. And the baking powder has that little tab so you can make sure you're getting a precise measure. In baking, precise measures do matter. Not so much with other recipes as much as it does with baking. Because you want your cakes to rise. So we need that. So I'm going to take a fork and combine this flour mixture. <coughs> So that's been mixed together. All right, so now our powdered milk needs to dissolve in the water. So we need a tablespoon of the powdered milk. We're going to set that aside because we will need this again for the icing. All right, so you mix it in the water that we pre-measured until it's dissolved, like so. Okay, it dissolves pretty quickly. Then you need to add your liquid milk into the powdered milk mixture. Don't ask me why you have to use both, because I do not know. I'm just following the recipe and I'm hoping it will turn out as good as the ones we used to buy at the bakery. Let's set that aside a minute. Okay. So after we got our flour mixture and our milk mixture together, we need to start making the rest of the cake. Okay, so now to our mixer with the electric mixer. I have a stand mixer. If you have a hand mixer, you can use that. Um, this is probably going to make your life a little bit easier, but if you don't have one, that's fine. I don't have a hand mixer. Mine broke last Christmas when I was using it. So I'm going to use my shortening. So it says you need to beat the shortening and the sugar together until it's nice and fluffy. Okay. 
got that in and I'm going to turn it on and let it work its magic here. It may take a few minutes to get this all incorporated and fluffy. I'm going to stop it every now and then and scrape the sides. Just like so. I'll show you the consistency once I get it all mixed in. And I'm going to turn the speed up a little bit. Scraping the sides again. So I can still hear that granulated sugar. I want to get that sound out of there. good here. Let me just give you a little show here. Kind of looks like snow. Alright, so now we got to add our eggs one at a time. Now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to crack my eggs in here. This is just something I do. If you're comfortable with that, you can go right ahead. I'm not the best, um, cracker of eggs and I don't want to get eggshells in my mixture so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack them one at a time okay there's no shells in there so but if you cracked your egg in a bowl and you did get a shell you could get it out before you add it and mix mess up your mixture so I'm gonna put that one in and then we need to mix that one until it's mixed in While that's mixing, I'm going to crack my next egg. Okay, that's mixed up. I'm going to go ahead and add this one in. And let that get mixed up very well. While that's mixing, I'm going to crack the third egg. And I was very fortunate. I didn't get shells in any of them. But had I cracked them in there, I would have got shells each time. So, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to add the last egg. And I'm going to set these aside. And it says just to let that get mixed in very well. I'm going to scrape the side a minute. Because I see some um, mixture not mixing in there. I'm going to scrape the bottom too because it doesn't seem to be mixing in. I'm going to beat this just a little bit longer. Make sure it's nice and smooth. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, that looks good. Let me show it to you. It doesn't look like snow anymore. But that's going to look like our yellow cake. of this bowl. We've already got our salt and our baking powder in. So I think that's about half. And we're going to mix that just until it's mixed in there. Scrape the sides. Make sure you have a little spatula handy because your ingredients get on the side and they don't want to mix in. Wipe this off real quick. I don't want it getting in the motor part. Okay. Now we got to add about half of the milk mixture. So I'm going to turn that off and pour in about half. You're just kind of guessing on this part. All right, so we mix it until it is blended. Do not turn that up really high or you're going to make a mess. Okay, it's rare, very liquidy, liquidy right now. <clears throat> and when that gets mixed in, we'll add the rest of our flour. Okay, now it's very runny right now. I'm not going to take it off to show you that part. So now we're going to put in the rest of our flour. and mix that in. And scrape the sides down. Mix it a little bit more and then I'll add the rest of the milk. Okay, now we're going to add the rest of the milk. Start that on low because it will splatter. All right, it says to beat it for about one minute, but we need to make sure we're scraping the sides every now and then to make sure it's getting all mixed in. Let me do that. May call for one more scraping. You can turn it up a little bit now because the liquid's kind of mixed in there and it's not going to splatter as much. Scrape the sides just one more time and then we're going to finish mixing it and then I think we can pour it in our pans.
Now my guess would have been putting vanilla in here, but it's not in the recipe. So we're not going to do it. All right, let's mix it up just a little bit more. this off of the beater here. It looks like a yellow cake mix. All that dripping in here. And a little tip I have in the kitchen is to keep paper towels nearby because I'm always wiping my hands. All right, here's what it looks like. It looks like a yellow cake mix. So we have three pans here, or you may have two, I have three, and we're gonna try our best to evenly distribute them because we want the layers to be the same size. So we start putting a little bit in each. And then you just kind of spread that around with your spatula. It says to bake between 20 and 30 minutes. And the bake time is determined by how many pans you use and how thick your layers are. Now, if you've made one layer a little more than the other, you can take a little bit out of that layer. And put in this first pan kind of looks slim. But let's spread them out and see what we've got going here. Consistency is just a little different than what I would make with a cake mix. Um, I did use a cake mix doctor recipe with a white cake mix, and it was a very delicious one. Uh, we can have that video linked if you want to see that one. It was mom's, I think, fluffy layer cake. It was delicious. So we'll have that one where you can watch if you are so inclined. Okay, let's see. I don't want my cake to be lopsided. <laughs> Trying to get it even and smooth. I don't want, want the icing to be fluffy, but I want the batter to be smooth. I may need to borrow some for this layer. We'll see. Okay, I think we're good. Try to get it as smooth as I can. All right, so I am going to put it in the oven. I'm going to test it at 20 minutes because I do have the three. I'm going to get all the drippings off of the pan so that doesn't burn on there. They said you will know it's done if you gently press in the center. Don't poke your finger in it because you don't want a big hole in your cake. But if you just gently press in the center and it springs back, the cake is ready. So if you need another 10 minutes to do that, but while the cakes are baking, we're gonna take them out. Then you let the cakes cool a few minutes in the pan before you dump them onto a cooling rack. And I've got three separate cooling racks to put these on and they need to be completely cold before you ice it. So while all that's happening, 
we have a little video to show you some nostalgia from Atlanta, downtown Atlanta, growing up in at Christmas time. And I hope you will enjoy it and then come back so that we can make the icing and put this cake together. So enjoy. smelt so delicious but while they are still cooling a little bit on the racks we're going to go ahead and make the icing and the filling so we can assemble the cakes in just a moment so to make the icing we are going to need half a cup of shortening and I'm going to go ahead and add that to my mixer mixing bowl so it can go in the mixer under the mixer And it's going to need a teaspoon of vanilla and I like to use real vanilla we buy this from Mexico the last time we were on a cruise we went over there and bought it we have we're about out of it so but if you want to use a clear vanilla I don't think it's going to color the icing that much but if you prefer you can do that all right, so a teaspoon of vanilla, but I highly recommend real vanilla. It's just a really good flavor. It smells so good. And we're going to need a teaspoon of salt. Okay. Now we're supposed to cream this together. it's all incorporated. Get my mixer bowl down tight and get my panel ready, locked in place. I'm going to start on low and I may need to go in with the spatula and mix it up a little more but let's see how this does right now. Okay, I'm going to scrape it down a little bit and make sure it all gets mixed together. 
The vanilla wants to sink to the bottom of the bowl. Okay, let's get this going again. Okay, so I am going to go, proceed to the next one. I'm going to scrape this off and I'm going to use my spatula to mix in the vanilla just a little more. That looks good and it smells good. Okay, so it needs about a pound of powdered sugar. I've already used a pound. This is a two pound bag. Uh, if you need to measure it's about three and a half cups. So I'm going to pour this a little at a time as instructed in the uh, recipe. And it just needs to make a stiff icing right now. So there's a possibility I won't add it all. I'm just going to look at the consistency of it. So let me get my spatula out of here. And when you're pouring powdered sugar, be very careful. You want to start on low or you will have a kitchen full of powdered sugar. So just a little at a time. And let's let it work its magic here. Okay, as this incorporates, then you can add a little bit more. Okay, I do need to scrape it down a little. This is working out beautiful. I think it's just the consistency where it's not powdery. Okay, when this incorporates, I'm going to add a little more sugar. Okay, it's looking good. Okay, it's time to scrape a little. And mix a little more. Add a little more. Okay, it's time to scrape. I may not use any more sugar. Sometimes when you're making an icing, it's kind of an eyeball. 
situation. You may need the whole amount. All right, let's give this a good mix and then we'll proceed to the next step here. I need to scrape it down. We just lost the light, sorry. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay, this has been mixing and I apologize for that technical di uh, difficulty. We had a light fall down and my husband fixed it, so we're good to go now. And I just let that continue mixing while he was fixing that. So now we have to mix our powdered milk into the water. And it's a half a cup of water and it is two tablespoons of powdered milk. And we just mix that together until it dissolves. Okay, this is a really stiff, uh, very coarse right now. So I'm gonna turn it back on. And then we're supposed to add the milk about two tablespoons at a time until it becomes a consistency where it's spreadable. So let's get that going now. scrape down the side and then we may need to add some more but it's starting to get the consistency that it needs to be I will add a little more milk because I do think it needs it Good. I think it's going to be good. Oh, it's looking really good. All right, let me scrape the sides one more time and run it just a little bit more. I don't think I need to add any more milk. It looks pretty good. Why it said just add it, you know, a few tablespoons at a time. Okay, down in the bottom it's kind of sticky, so I'm going to add another tablespoon to go down in the bottom while it's not running, just to kind of loosen that up a little bit. Wanted to stick to the bottom down here. I think this is going to turn out really well. Just trying to get all this off of the bottom, and then I'm just going to whip it. Don't think we need more milk, but we will see. All right, let's just continue mixing.
Kind of, now I'm just trying to get all the lumps out. So I'm going to turn the speed up a little. It's starting to look really silky, which is what we want. Turn it up one more time because I've got some pumps in there I want to get out. I think this is perfect. It's a nice creamy consistency right here. All right, so I'm gonna clean this up, get our cakes, um, make the filling, and then we will put this cake together. So stay tuned. Cakes turn golden brown, they're beautiful. They're completely cool. So now we're gonna make the filling and then we will assemble the cakes. Now the recipe called for frozen, unsweetened coconut, the only frozen coconut we could find was sweetened. We, only unsweetened we could find was this dehydrated. So I hope it's gonna be moist enough, but we will see. So to make the filling, the whole cake needed um, like two pounds of shredded coconut. So for the filling, we need a cup and a half. So I've already measured that out and we need two tablespoons of granulated sugar. One, two, and then we need two tablespoons of water. Now the mix is supposed to be moist, but not soupy. So I'm hoping this will work on this dehydrated. Um, you were the thaw it anyway, so let's see how this turns out. One and two. Okay, so I'm gonna mix this together and then we pour it into the coconut. Gotta mix it well because the sugar needs to dissolve a little bit. Warm water may have been better to use, but this was at room temperature. Okay, I'm just gonna keep mixing until I don't hear the crunching of the sugar very well. I think a warm water would have done a little better, but we're going to go with this. Okay, I'm going to just pour it over the coconut here. <coughs> Excuse me. And I think I am going to need to add more water because this is dehydrated. So I'm going to add it one tablespoon at a time. Like the recipe says, it's supposed to be moist, but not soupy. So I'm hoping this dried coconut will work. And we need a little more. I'm putting two more in because it's very dry. So please note, this is not the exact recipe because we could not find the frozen coconut. Yeah, it's soaking it up, but it's not keeping it moist. It smells good. So 
So if you can't find the frozen coconut that would be naturally moist in consistency, just, you know, use your judgment. I did sample this coconut before we started and it has a nice toasty flavor and I think it's delicious. Right. So I think that's enough water. I'm not exactly sure how much water I added. But it is nice and moist now when you get all that water absorbed here. Get this mixed in well. And we are about to assemble our cakes. Now once we ice the cakes, we've got to press coconut on it. So what I am going to do is spread paper towels over this surface that I'm going to be working on this out of the way to catch falling coconut. <laughs> this is better than falling coconuts off of a tree hitting you on the head though. Just saying. All right, so I've got a cake board. I'm going to put this in a cardboard box to take to a party. So I've got my first layer on my cake. I think I've got it centered on my cake board. Okay, so we made our icing, we have our filling. So it said to put a thin layer of icing on the first layer. So this icing is beautiful. And I don't think the brown vanilla changed the color. It's really pretty. All right, so just spread a thin layer over this layer. I'm concerned it may not be enough icing for the whole cake, but I hope it is. Okay. Now we got to put half of the filling on here because we don't put it on the top of the cake. I'm just going to mix that just a tad bit more. I don't want any standing water. Okay. So about half of this will go on this layer. That should do it. And I'm going to spread this out on this layer here. I can't wait to try this, but I'm taking it to a Christmas party tomorrow. And we will see how it goes. Okay, we've got that one. So let's do our next layer. Brush off crumbs. Spread that up. Okay. Put another thin layer on this one. Trying to spread that out to conserve some of the icing for the rest of the cake. If you're doing two layers, just put all the filling between the two. You don't want it on the top.
Pull it back and spread it around. We paused the video a while ago, went to the restroom, and I noticed um, I had icing on my glasses. <laughs> All right, so put the filling on this layer. What is left? And it's easier if you just use your fingers here. They're clean. <laughs> Now I gotta get the third layer right here. Put it on top. These cakes are so spongy. Alright, so brush off the crumbs on the top here. So now what we've got to do is ice the whole cake, and then we've got to press the coconut on it. It may or may not take all of this coconut. We just got to cover it very good and thoroughly. We don't want any part of the cake without coconut. I want to get these crumbs off. All right. Get that out of the way. So let's frost this cake. I wish I had some of the fancy tools to frost a cake. Right now I don't. Maybe Santa will be good and put some things in my stocking. I don't know. I've been a good girl. I promise. Alright, I'm going to get the sides and then We'll put whatever's left on top. Just, you don't want any cake exposed. One of the spinning pedestals would be good too. Now, my husband and I, we are little kids at heart, so we lick the cake batter bowl after we put the cakes in the oven, and if the cake tastes as good as that batter, we are in for a treat. I gotta make sure my husband gets a slice of this, because it's um, the ladies' party from church. <laughs> but if they eat it all, I'll make another one. Maybe I'll make one for our Christmas. Okay. And um, we'll post the video for the link for uh, the fluffy uh, cake I made earlier this year, which was delicious. It started off with a cake mix though. And there's nothing wrong with that. A cake mix is very good. And especially if you doctor it up, you can't tell. 
that this was not hard. So this may be the go-to recipe for birthdays and stuff. Because it was simple to make. You could put a chocolate icing on it or do this icing without the coconut. I'm going to go around and make sure there are no spots that are not covered. I like to bake. It's one of my favorite things to do. Get some of this off the side. Just make sure it's thoroughly coated. And then the fun part with the coconut's about to happen. I thought this coconut will be good on this cake. It's a little dry, but I think it'll soak in. So I'm just making sure it's coated. If you would like to, if you grew up in Atlanta and you enjoyed this cake as a child or an adult or whenever, I would love to hear from you. And if you make this cake, I would really love to hear from you. Um, if you want to share some pictures from your childhood, you know, growing up in Atlanta or anywhere, if it was a special place. I know Rich has just made... Christmas special in Atlanta. They always got a very tall live tree. Put it in the, um, it was like a breezeway or something that, you know, downtown could see. You could see it from the interstate. Uh, Thanksgiving night was when they lit the tree, and it was just a very 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 special occasion they got choirs and soloists and just really made a big event of it and it was very special it was televised we never went downtown to see it but it was televised you know in atlanta for everybody that lived in atlanta to see it but we always made an effort to go downtown and see it all lit up. Now, as I got older, I worked in downtown Atlanta and I used to go home and I could see the tree and it was just beautiful because it was dark when I got off work. And um, that can be a gloomy time when it gets dark when you're off work, but um, when you see the beautiful lights and everything. And then as a kid, they had the pink pig monorail. And I recently found out that was a pretty popular thing for a lot of department stores. And it was different for every department store, but Rich's had the pink pig. And it would go through the toy department. It was just such a treat. So much fun. Okay, I think got it covered. So now let's do the coconut. Let me clean this up a little. Because if I don't, the coconut's going to stick on the uh, board. But yeah, if you have memories of Atlanta downtown, I didn't work at Rich's. I worked at the uh, rival store, Davison's, which, you know, eventually became Macy's. And then Rich's actually was bought by Macy's before they went out of business. And Rich's just has 
totally dissolved now, and that's kind of sad for me. Lots of memories. All right, let's get this covered. So it just said to press it down. Let's see, I got a big blob right here. All over the cake, on the sides, the top, and everything. And just kind of press it in. I don't think we're going to need as much cooking as, as it said. But you know what? We'll stick it in the freezer and we'll have frozen coconut next time. Okay, I'm not sure how they got it on the sides here. I'm doing my best. But it's very pretty and it looks very festive for Christmas. It looks like snow. I uh, hope the ladies at this party will enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope I was able to take you down memory lane for special Christmases as a child or a young adult, especially if you lived in the Atlanta area. This coconut smells really good. So you just press it all in. I wish there was a way you could smell this deliciousness going on here. And I'm not going to say this part's easy. It's very messy. Hopefully it's very worth it. Wipe my hands a bit here. Turn this around and see what we've got. Yeah, I gotta press in all the coconut here. So I know I'm gonna need at least one more bag. Just want it totally covered. If you want, you could maybe dye a little bit of the coconut green, put a wreath or a Christmas tree cookie cutter over the top, and sprinkle the green colored coconut. That's just a thought. Starting to look good. Our party's tomorrow, so you're supposed to let this sit in the refrigerator at least an hour. So mine will be all night and all day. Party's not till after work tomorrow. So it should be good and set. All right, let's turn this around. Make sure we're getting it all. I got a big portion right here. Yeah, good idea to have something underneath it. Some over here. This is a totally made from scratch coconut cake. And if you grew up in Atlanta, chances are you had this. Okay. Yep, I only needed two bags. That covered. 
think it's all covered, so I'm going to get this excess off. And once I get this cleaned off, this cake is done ready to go in the refrigerator and chill. I think it's very beautiful. If it um, tastes anything, how it looks and smells, it's going to be wonderful. So I hope it tastes like the one we used to get at Rich's, but we'll see. But there you have it. A homemade Rich's Bake Shop Coconut Cream Cake. Trying to get this off without making a mess here. Okay. So there you have it. So let me know if you try this and how you've enjoyed um, Rich's cakes in the past, or and if you make this one, let me know if you like it. So please share this, especially with people that grew up in Atlanta or still live in Atlanta and they remember the Rich's traditions uh, at Christmas time. And I want to wish every one of you a blessed holiday season and a Merry Christmas, which I'll probably will be back before Christmas comes. But if you don't see me again, Merry Christmas and I will see you on the next video. Bye. <laughs>